I hoped and prayed all the way to Winnipeg that I'd survive because I was so cold. Tonight, a Manitoba woman is speaking out, questioning the lack of care and heat on a medical flight to Winnipeg. Her story just ahead. This is CBC Winnipeg News. Thank you for joining us. A Brandon woman says she felt left in the cold on an emergency medical flight to Winnipeg. Her story has now caught the attention of Manitoba's MLAs. And as the CBC's Josh Crabb reports, it is raising questions about the privatization of Manitoba's air ambulance transfers. 79-year-old Eleanor Beekler of Brandon went to hospital February 1st because of pain in her chest. On February 3rd, she was airlifted from Brandon to Winnipeg to have an angiogram at St. Boniface Hospital. Beekler says she wasn't afraid of flying, but she had to endure cold temperatures on the flight because she wasn't properly dressed, having gone to the hospital in a hurry. I went into the plane and it was bitter cold inside. Um, there was no comforts whatsoever. There was no blankets, nothing except bare bones cargo plane. She says she was only dressed in a house coat and had slip on shoes and there was no blankets on the airplane, which she says was cold. And I hoped and prayed all the way to Winnipeg that I'd survive because I was so cold and there was no facilities for a heart attack. If I had one, I would die. Once she got into Winnipeg, she says the ramp to exit the plane was covered in snow. NDP leader Wab Canoe raised concerns about her experience, pointing a finger at the privatization of air ambulance services. The answer to the question of where do we go from here, I think the first step has to be higher standards and the enforcement of those standards. Deputy Premier Cliff Cullen responded to concerns in the House, citing a request for proposals that went out to improve medical aviation services. Uh, this, I think, RFP will also build a more modern critical care service that supports the evolving needs of Manitobans. Let me say I'm hoping 100% that there will be changes. Um, but I haven't got a whole lot of faith in it. Because... Beekler says she's speaking out to improve the service for others. A shared health spokesperson says it regrets Beekler didn't have a positive experience and that it is reviewing the circumstances of the incident. Josh Crabb, CBC News, Winnipeg. Advocates are calling to extend supports for Manitoba youth in foster care who go beyond the cutoff age of 18 years old. Marie Christian is the director of Manitoba's Youth and Care Network. She says the current system sets young people to face unnecessary barriers. Christian says she's seen too many kids fall through the cracks after that. I've attended too many funerals for young people who grew up in care and either felt hopeless and decided to take their own life or fell into addictions. And the province says 625 kids will age out of the system this year. Families Minister Rochelle Squires acknowledges there is a huge need, but also says current resources are underutilized. Well, more than a decade of legal wrangling and political turmoil over the building of Winnipeg's police headquarters could be coming to an end. The remaining defendants in a city lawsuit over the police HQ have agreed to settle. The CBC's Bartley Kivas has the story. Winnipeg's downtown police headquarters opened years behind schedule, tens of millions over budget, and ended up the subject of two scathing audits and a five-year RCMP investigation. It also led the city to file lawsuits against dozens of people and companies. The allegations involve fraud and deficiencies related to the construction. Now, most of the defendants have agreed to settle. This is a victory for the citizens of Winnipeg. It provides certainty, it provides $21.5 million uh, to taxpayers. It avoids a minimum of $6.4 million in additional legal costs and years of legal proceedings. The proposed settlement would end the city's legal action against the defendants, including Armic Babakanians of Caspian Construction. Winnipeg's chief administrative officer said this is the best possible outcome from the civil lawsuits. They were the only tools available to the city to attempt to get uh, accountability from the named defendants uh, and in the end a civil action is about money. The settlement has no bearing on a decision by a judge who determined former Winnipeg CAO Phil Schiegel accepted a $327,000 bribe from Bobacanians. Schiegel appealed that decision. The mayor says the outcome of that appeal may close a chapter, if not the entire book, on the police headquarters saga.
I guess that's yet to be determined. I, I, I would believe probably in large part, but I can't say that for certainty at this time. The decision also makes it less likely the province will call a public inquiry into not just the police headquarters, but other real estate and construction scandals at City Hall. CBC News reached out to our McBobacanians, but we haven't heard back. This deal has to go before council next week. Bart Lakivas, CBC News, Winnipeg. This was the scene on Portage Avenue around the supper hour tonight. A rally and march was organized by the group Winnipeg Police Cause Harm. It was held to mark International Day Against Police Brutality. The group that runs Winnipeg's only mobile overdose prevention site says they were sideswiped by provincial plans to license addiction services. Sunshine House's mobile unit does some safe injection supervision downtown. They say the site does not need more regulations and already follows federal rules. It creates a, an, an additional barrier, an additional hoop to jump through to provide these types of life-saving services. Levi Foy wants to know what a new provincial regulatory body overseeing addiction services would do. Well, he's an international wrestling star, a rock star, an author, actor, and producer, and now the street he grew up on in Winnipeg bears his name. A section of Wordsworth Bay in Westwood has officially been renamed Chris Jericho Way. He also received Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee Medal this afternoon. It's an honor. You can't even put words to this. And uh, my mom passed away about 15 years ago, and she would be so proud of my grandma. And here is a look at Thompson. Earlier today, parts of the north have gotten a lot of snow this week. Meteorologist John Sauter is in next with his forecast when we return in 60 seconds. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. The trade and upgrade event is on now. I wanted to start tonight by showing you the afternoon satellite and radar. Satellite showing us the cloud cover you see here. Radar showing us this band of a rather a, a vigorous snowfall south of the Trans-Canada Highway for the most part. Not much of this in the Winnipeg area, but this is one to two centimeters, again, south of the city of Winnipeg, uh, but not much accumulation. And speaking of not much, not much sunshine over the coming days. And high pressure is starting to build in from the west in the coming days, and it's sort of pushing against this stubborn low pressure system here and because of the position of that high we will be in a northerly or northwest wind over the coming days that will be on the brisk side may even see some more blowing and drifting in the red river valley on thursday afternoon and through the day friday you can see the yellow number on the right is the gust factor so approaching that 50 kilometer mark and then on friday we've got these strong strong winds especially in the southern red river valley at 60 55 to 60 60 kilometers per hour so blowing snow could again be an issue toward the end of the week minus 11 in the morning winds already gusting to 50 same with the afternoon with a high of minus 8 it's going to feel cool still windy on friday but things settle down on the weekend and start to warm up sunday the warmer day at minus 2 and we get closer to seasonal as we head through the end of next week Thank you, John. That's your late news for this Wednesday. Thank you for being with us tonight. We'll be back with you again tomorrow at 6 and 11. Have a great night.